Welcome back. Sharjah Islamic Bank has announced that it achieved a net profit of 272 million dirhams in 2012. So before we take a look at the day's business news, let's first take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. And in our top business story, Dubai Islamic Bank launched a one billion US dollar hybrid sukuk on Wednesday, according to reports. The largest Sharia compliant lender in the UAE by assets, Dubai Islamic Bank, is the second Gulf bank to issue a hybrid perpetual sukuk. After Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank sold a one billion US dollar structure in November, attracting 15 billion US dollars in orders. The perpetual Sukuk launched at a profit rate of 6.25%, looks to shore up its tier one capital. Reports say that the bank had a tier one capital ratio of 13.9% at the end of 2012, compared to 12.6% in 2007. In Dubai alone, there are currently over 30 free zones, covering sectors from finance to media and textiles to e-business. And business professionals in the UAE estimate that the annual average growth rate of the free zones in the Middle East and North Africa stands at about 20%. The statistics were revealed today at the second Middle East Free Zone Forum, which calls for the development of laws and regulations governing the work of companies. Hosted by the Arab Business Club, a regional business networking platform for businessmen, investors and decision makers, the event was also attended by CEOs and director generals of government agencies. With more than 8,500 members, Mr. Hamdan Mohammed al Mushedi, the president and chairman of the club, stated that the forum will boost strategic partnerships and mutual relations in the UAE and the wider region. Experts discussed topics such as incentives, facilities and operational costs, in addition to logistics services. The most important thing is the transparency in the economy of the UAE in general. Then it comes the 100% ownership of the company, so they don't need what's called a local partner. Then the 100% repatriation of their capital and the, 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 the uh, profits, uh, 100% uh, of uh, exemption from all commercial levies, no any uh, custom duties. So all these things is adding to the benefits of the FDI or the, uh, the international investments to come in, in here. You know, we are living in a very globalized world now, and it's very difficult to live in isolation. So the, the, the south needs the north, the east needs the east the West. So this is how the combination goes on. Those companies who, who think in that strategic way, I call it the glocal, uh, glocal, localization mindset. So once they have this mindset in place, then you know the linkage happens. And the linkage does not happen unless we have such platform like th- this today, for example. They have over 100 thinkers. They came from different places, different backgrounds, with, where they carry a, a very rich experience. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to, to bridge the gap, learn from each other, benchmark, have the best uh, you know, uh, practices and the shared learning, and they move forward. So yes, your, your question is a very uh, essential one. We need to find a way to bridge and to find a way to link between each other, yes. Thousands of abandoned farms across the UAE are to be rehabilitated and reclaimed, according to the International Centre for Biosaline Agriculture in Dubai. Around 8,000 farms have been left uncultivated or are close to abandonment due to salty soil conditions, which leaves the ground infertile, many of which are in the western region and in Al Ain. The figures were announced by Dr. Shoaib Ishmael, a saline crop expert at the centre, who revealed that the centre now wants to test alternative production systems in order to grow crops that are more tolerant of salty conditions, while also being environmentally and economically sound. He added that reclaimed farms will initially grow shrubs and grass for animal feed, and then two to three years down the line, vegetable crops are on the agenda.